What's up, everybody? Welcome to the pilot episode of Movie Resurrection Review. I'm Jay. And I'm Tim. And we're going to be reviewing movies. So what's the point of this show? It's to review old movies that you may have seen, you haven't seen, you thought were great, see if they still hold up. Um... Maybe some hidden gems in there. Maybe some stuff that you've never heard of, mm -hmm. you know, which I guess would be gems, right? Maybe yeah. you're like, oh, you know what? These two idiots like it. Let me go give that a try. Um, we're going to take some movies that uh, actually the next episode is going to be mo a movie we used to love growing up and not so great. But we're not on that episode yet. We are on the very first episode. And what's the first movie we're going to be talking about today? Three o'clock high. Boom! Three o'clock high. The story of meek mannered uh, high school student named Jerry Mitchell who was forced into a fight with the new transfer student bully, quote unquote, if you will. We're going to walk you guys through this movie, tell you guys more about this movie, and uh, three o'clock high because that's when the fight takes place is three o'clock on the dot. Let's get into a couple things first. Let's get some details on the movie. The movie came out in 1987. It was written by Richard Christian Matheson and Thomas Salossi, and directed by Phil Jeannot. I hope I said that right. I'm not French. Jacques Cousteau, he, he, he. I don't even know if that's French. I gotta be honest. Ain't that the Italian, <laughs> the Italian hand right there anyways? Anyhow, it stars... <laughs> Casey Samasco, Anne Ryan, Richard Tyson, Jonathan Weiss, Stacy Glick, Jeffrey Tambor, Philip Baker Hall, and John P. Ryan. If I murdered anyone's name, I'm sorry. I did not mean to. That's your main cast right now. Uh, right there. Sorry. Uh, a couple of standout names in this. Uh, Casey Samasco. Who was he? What did he go on to do after this movie? You may know him as the pugilist from Young Guns. He's the one who says, uh, regulators, hang on, what's he say? Um, something to the effect of, you can't be any geek off the street, gotta be handy with the steel, if you know what I mean. Um, talking about the, they're protecting the ranch, yeah. in other words, which famously, and hell, actually, I gotta be honest, probably more famously, that clip was used in the movie Regulate by Warren G, uh, featuring Nate Dogg. Mm -hmm. I think a lot of people know it from that. And may not remember it was from the first Young Guns movie. He's the guy who says it, so he's kind of immortalized yeah. in, in that way. Uh, Richard Tyson, another standout name here. He went on to do uh, Kindergarten Cop. He was the dad that was trying to go steal his son back in Kindergarten Cop. And I know he's done more than just that, but um, people who are maybe our age, that might be a notable movie you may know him from. Okay. So again, released in 1987, let's talk about money. Why? Because we have to. Oh, we don't have to. I was a lead up for you, but I'll oh. go ahead and talk. Oh, shit, my bad. <laughs> all right, let's talk about money, all right? The movie cost $5 million to make. That's $5 million. Back in the 80s, that's a lot of money. Um, that's a lot of money now. I wish I had $5 million to make a movie. Right? First week of uh, box office, it earned uh, $1.5 million. Total, it earned $3.6 million. Now, that is a no good. That's, that's a, a financial flop. failure is mm -hmm. what that's called in well, any industry. Yeah. <laughs> that's a financial failure. Yeah, uh, financially, that would be considered a flop, actually, right there. Um, so, let's go ahead and move on with this. I don't want to really get into any reviews from back in the day. I'm looking at one from Roger Ebert, but he's he's an idiot. We will we will talk about the Rotten Tomato score. Ain't he dead? All right, yes. Yes. <laughs> I don't mean he was smart. I'm just saying. Anyways, let's... So, the movie follows Jerry Mitchell, and it's kind of one of those classic kind of 80s, 90s kind of montage scenes at the beginning. He's He gets up late for school. School in this case, sometimes it's work, whatever. And you got this montage of them getting ready. Um, couldn't even bother himself with the shower. He was that far. He did wash his hair, though. Mm -hmm. which was, that was kind of, I guess you don't want an itchy scalp, but if you're going to do that, you might as well just get in and at least, you know, wet everything. Pits, feet, crotch, and ass and right. call it a day if you're going to do it's all that. It's called a horse bath. It is what it's called. I was trying to avoid saying that, <laughs> but now you know. <laughs> 
So his parent, he has a sister. Uh, I forget this. What's the sister's name? I don't Worst know. review ever already. <laughs> Their parents are out of town, and it's his job to get them to high school. And she's younger than him. They go to the same school. I'm assuming she's a freshman. He's like a senior or something, junior or senior. Um, he rushes off to school. They're late. He's eating in the car, trying to brush his teeth in the car. Almost gets into a wreck. Uh, finally gets to school, picks up the friend, and then they get to school. And he actually runs the school store. You can buy pencils, papers, t-shirts, things of that nature, pens, and Show the like. Show your spirit. Show your school spirit, exactly. All right, so um, when he gets to school, and right before they show the antagonist, Buddy Ravel, you have one of the most well-shot, like this guy is known, you know, as, as, as dropping people, breaking necks, stabbing people, pulling knives on people. That was, the, that was his reputation. Yes, coming just, into just a, the school. a badass. Now, the way they did it, you have all these different students walking up and talking about him. And where they pan off of one student, they'll go to another one. And it picks up the conversation, right? I loved that. Uh, yeah, that actually. was awesome. That, that was, was really, really awesome. well done. Yes. yes. And then you get to actually see Buddy Ravel after everyone's like, oh, he's new here. He's an animal. And then Buddy what Ravel pulls up. Decked a teacher, put him in the hospital or something. Pulled, pulled a, a knife, on, a the knife on the coat. Yeah, yeah. Uh, broke broke someone's neck. Got sent to a... Uh, um, uh, What's it called? Alternative school? His, but they called it something else. Continuance. 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 His, his reputation basically is is he's a bad he's a, he's a bad motherfucker. He doesn't like people who doesn't he doesn't like to be touched, and he basically breaks anything and everybody who gets in his way. And then you got him pulling up to the school <laughs> mm-hmm. in a busted ass vehicle. Has no door paneling, but you just that's just what type of guy Buddy Rebel is, you know. He's a hard man. Steps out in, in boots, jeans, you know, kind of dirtied up jeans. This, what, like a, a white t-shirt over a, what, long john? Long john, john yeah, yeah. Okay. Long hair, looks a little unkept, a little greasy, but not like, like the dongo dirty. <laughs> <laughs> With the look on his face, like, fuck, here we go again. Pretty much. So... Now, we find out that Jerry Mitchell, the main antagonist of the story, he actually writes for the school paper as well. And his friend, not much of a friend, he kind of set him up to go find Buddy Ravel and do this piece on Buddy Ravel as the newest, the newest guy on campus. And he goes to the bathroom. He's taking a leak, and Buddy Ravel actually happens to walk in at that moment. And... He's using the bathroom next to him, like a stall over, two stalls over, I guess. And first of all, this is this is this is like one of those unwritten guy codes. When you're in the bathroom, you don't look over at the guy next to you when you're standing in a stall. You damn sure don't talk to the guy if you don't know him. It's kind of weird to do it when you do know someone, but at least if you know them and you're both looking like this while doing your business, you can be like, dude, what do you think of the game so far? All right, yeah, pretty legit, right? Cool. <laughs> when you don't know the guy, you don't look in his direction, you don't talk to him, and he broke all those rules. But, you know, I digress. Um, he basically tries to introduce himself. Hi, I'm Jerry Mitchell. I'm for the school paper. I'm going to do a piece on you. And Buddy's like, I don't want people to know about me. That's that's not how I get down. Um, and he kind of... Buddy kind of takes everything that Jerry says and twists it in a way to where it's like, oh, are you saying this about me? You know what I mean? And the whole time Jerry Mitchell's like, oh, uh, oh, uh, uh, right. no, no, no. He tries backpedaling. Right. But ends up backpedaling into Buddy Ravel. Yeah. Literally. He Literally. touches Buddy Ravel. He, he says, hey, you know what? Let's just forget about it. Buddy Ravel looks down like this. Buddy Ravel looks down like this. He gets the look of, you just fucked up. <laughs> Grabs him, slams him up against the mirror, breaks the mirror. And he's like, me and you, three o'clock, we're fighting. What's he say? You run? Or, or if you, what's he say? You go to you go to the teacher. It'll be worse. It'll be worse. You go home, I'll be under your bed. You go home, I'll be under your bed. <laughs> right. Like, he goes through this kind of trio of things where it's Try like... Try to run, I'll find you. <laughs> it's not going to be a good idea if you don't show up, basically. Right. Now, from this point, the entire movie, 
Jerry is trying to figure out, and he's stressing big time because he knows 3 o'clock's coming. He knows he has to fight this dude. He's trying to figure out a plan. Like, how do I get out of this? How, how, can, how can I avoid this fight? He tries to skip school. He tries to bribe another student who ultimately gets his teeth knocked out. Very bad. It's Bro like broke little, nose, actually. Yeah, broke yeah. nose. So something I noticed about this movie, I didn't notice back in the day. Maybe, you know, as kids, we just weren't that observant, right? They show the clock a lot, like 26 different times. Mm -hmm. But it's relevant to the story because it's counting down to 3 p.m. Mm -hmm. It's counting down to 3 p.m. So now Jerry is trying to find all these ways to not have to fight this dude, including... Try skipping school. Which ultimately gets chased down. He gets caught, chased down by the by the uh, the school security guard. The school security guard. His friend. Wait. The knife. No. Yes. What I was about to say. I was about to say. So that. well, well. Hang on. Let's let's go in order. Okay. Okay. So he tries to the the friend actually tries to set Buddy Ravel up first by planting a knife, a switchblade in his locker. In his locker, and then leaving a note with one of the teachers or disciplinarians or something like that. Yeah. They try getting the open the locker back open. They can't. So he's like, okay, well, F this, I'm out of here. You know, he tries skipping school. Well, when he does, he gets in his car and the switchblade is stuck in his, his steering wheel with a note saying, like, 3 o'clock, you die. Something like that. Something something to that yeah. effect. I'm sure Eric's showing it right now. It doesn't say that at all. But basically, like, you're you're a fool for trying to do this. Like, you're, you're toast. You're dead meat. Right. So he pockets the knife blade, tries starting the car, opens the hood, car won't start and it's all jumped everything's cut the wires are cut on it so he ends up getting caught by the school security guard and tries ditching him but the school security guard ends up chasing him <laughs> chasing down, <it> down. <laughs> and takes him to the principal's office or the the dean's, dean's office, office. Principal's yeah office and the dean is pretty much well where's the note but the security guard let it go in the wind, which here is where we get a uh, kind of a, the security guard does like a little lip bite. Like there's throughout the movie, there's some kind of weird things and looks, even with the sister at the beginning. Yeah. The sister's like giving him a look that it's, ain't sisterly it's, in the very beginning. It's strange. Yeah. But go but, on. But go on. Okay. So he ends up getting put back in class. Then he tries to pay one of the uh, the a football player, who is known for for taking up for another uh, student. Apparently, Craig, in junior high, this this Craig was his name. Yeah. He took up for another student, and Craig tells Jerry, he's like, "Yeah, but he paid me to do that too," and he's like, "I can pay you." So he winds up going and taking money out of the school store register to give to Craig to this, fight Buddy to get Buddy off his back. Right. Well, Craig makes a mistake. A poking Buddy in the chest like this. Buddy sees it, looks down, grabs him, breaks the finger, pop, hits him right in the nose, breaks his nose. He falls into a shelf of books and it dominoes, dominoes all the way down. Everything. So it starts dominating, knowing the, uh, the bookshelves, and at the end of the domino, there's Jerry and his friend, friend. <laughs> just staring there, standing there looking. Buddy's just like, Shh. it's funny. Yeah. So Craig winds up giving him the money back. Because it didn't work. Felt bad. I think he let him keep 100 bucks or something like that. So then he decides at one point that... He's going to try and get kicked out of school. Or detention. Or, or detention. Because you can't fight if you're in detention. So he's giving an oral book report in English class, assumedly. And <laughs> lights up a cigarette. Says stuff he shouldn't be saying in school. Drops a cigarette in the teacher's coffee. Starts mugging down with the teacher. <laughs> And I guess got lightheaded and passed out. No, he kisses Wind her. He kisses, kisses, that's what I mean, mugging down oh, the teacher. Oh, mugging yeah. down the teacher, yeah. And at that point, I guess the excitement of the cigarette was too much for him. He passes out <laughs> with a smile on his face. It's hilarious. Wakes up in the uh, nurse's office and he's like basically asking the nurse, oh, I'm sus I'm, I got detention, right? Nope, <laughs> teacher liked that shit. <laughs> Here she said, give, me, give you her number <laughs> whenever you yes. wake up, if you don't return back to class. And that your book report was one of the best she's had ever. So then he takes his money that he got back from Craig. Now, mind you, he destroyed, destroyed the student office trying to get the cash register open. Because they even showed that at the beginning of the movie that the cash register is kind of janky. Yeah. And no one is supposed to open. Destroyed the store trying to get this cash register open. And the 
teacher, I guess, supervisor over this store, he was like the student worker or whatever, winds up calling the cops to see who, try to figure out who came in and stole the money and, and uh, ransacked the store, basically. So now you got a cop involved, which is not super important yet. Yet. <laughs> so then he decides to take this money. And he goes to Buddy Ravel and he goes, hey, I'll pay you to back off. And he's like, what's the catch? Sorry. Prior to this, though, they got busted cheating yeah. on a test. Both sent to the principal's office. Jerry, who is not a problem kid, says, oh, I was cheating off of him because he didn't want to narc on Buddy Ravel. And he thinks that by being cool mm -hmm. and not being a narc, Buddy might go, oh, okay, you know what? Earn some points. Yeah, whatever. earn yeah. some points, whatever. So the teacher's like, he I, don't, I don't believe that. Writes a question on the board. He goes, solve that, I'll believe it. Buddy Ravel actually gets up. No one said he was dumb. Just right. said he was a hard ass, right? Solves the problem. Boom, boom. Can I go? He leaves. Jerry, I'm very disappointed in you kind of thing. Catches up with Buddy Ravel after that. And then he tries to pay then him Then he off. says, hey, you know, we're not so different, right? Like, <laughs> that was cool, right? Like, and he's like, three o'clock, dude. It's on still. <laughs> and then he tries to pay him off. And Buddy's like, what's the catch? Because they were just in the principal's office. Right. He's like, no catch. Like, I, just, I don't want to do this. I'm not, I don't want to fight, basically. I'm not a fighter. I'm not freaking, a fighter, right. You know, you'd rip my head off pretty much. Yeah. And so, reluctantly, he's like, at first, and he ends up taking the money. Fingers through it, and he's just like, you know what, dude? You're the biggest pussy I've ever met. <laughs> he's like, you didn't even try. He gives him yeah. a look. Yeah. Because you didn't even try. And... Then we find Jerry may show up on the roof of the school with some soul searching. That that right there, oh, that didn't set well with him. That that, that hurt. That, that you know that hurt. He's him. like fucking. He's he's like I ain't no pussy, dude. I ain't no bitch. That that, that God. Then that pumped his nuts enough. So he goes <laughs> and he's like, "Hey man, give me the money back." And Buddy Ravel's like, "Nah, man, you already gave it to me. No refunds. No refunds, pretty much." And he's like, "Yeah, well, you can give him the money back." And he's like, "You know, no." And it's like, well, you know what? Me and you. Jerry Mitchell calls him out. Me and you. The fight's still on. Fight's Three o'clock. Goes. As he's cutting the corner, he hits a, a, a locker. He cuts that corner. He's like. <laughs> <laughs> All right. So no one ever said Jerry Mitchell was a puss. Right? And in his heart, he knows he's not. This, guy's, this movie has a lot of foreshadowing. Like first, first couple seconds of the movie, he's late. He hits the alarm clock. He's the only person I've ever known in my entire life. Buddy Ravel, I don't think, could do it. That could knock the hands off of a clock with a punch. So you brought that up to me, and it's one of those old school, like, you hit the snooze button on the top, you know, kind of thing. Most people would just slap it, whatever, and give you a couple more minutes. He hits it, and pretty much destroys the inside of the clock. The yeah. hands fall off. Yeah. I didn't notice that back in the day, which you were right. You were like, yo, that's foreshadowing right there. And I'm yeah. like... Huh. Knowing the outcome of the movie, because this is a movie that I, we both have seen a, a million times, right? Yeah. He was like, they're foreshadowing, and I'm like, huh. Okay. You might be onto something right here, right? You yeah. might be onto something. Yeah. And um, so, a lot of foreshadowing. There's a, a scene where he's in the um, a bio class, and they're watching a movie, and there's a scorpion that eats a grasshopper, and like, oh, the powerful scorpion overpowers buddy. buddy grasshopper jerry yeah yeah, yeah. he yeah. never stood a chance you know all that good stuff so three o'clock hits they go out and it's like the whole school i've had a fight like this a whole school <laughs> people hanging out the windows Ooh, and should we should we end each of these with like a personal story and we, we could i mean we, we could, could right you so, guys let us know okay so now it's three o'clock we're getting into the fight so Jerry Mitchell goes into uh, goes into the center of the circle, and Buddy Ravel's there, you know. And Jerry's looking like he ain't no coward, he ain't no pussy. But Mr. O'Rourke pops up out of the crowd. Mr. O'Rourke's the principal. He's like, "No, there ain't gonna be no fight today. You know, everyone go home. Jerry, you go home. Buddy, you come with me." And he grabs Buddy's arm to 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 get him into his office. Buddy looks down, one punch, bam, decks him. Oh, what's, he, what's he say, Buddy? You come with he me. Said, Sorry, Mr. O'Rourke, I don't think I can do that. <laughs> Grabs him by the arm. He's a touch freak. Buddy Ravel looks down, looks at him, bam, drops him. Drops him. And he's like, one punch, decked him. He's like, all right, let's do this. Yeah, now no one's standing in the way. So then he comes at Jerry, which is 
weird because like his hits to this point have been perfectly on point. You know, he did it with Craig, he did it with Mr. O'Rourke. He comes in running at, at Jerry, hits him in the like the arm the shoulder. Arm. Yeah. Yeah. So Jerry falls, because he did hit him hard, but he hit him in the shoulder. He couldn't hit him in the face for some reason. <laughs> Weird thing. Um Buddy fall or sorry, Jerry falls, and then he gets up and No, the, no, no. As as after he falls, I guess as he's getting up, there's two guys with the camera that are trying to film the fight. Okay, yes. So Buddy grabs the camera, smashes it. Against the bed of a truck, right. Keeps on walking towards him. Then his love interest in the movie jumps in front. You, you gotta go through me if you wanna blah. Just, you know, the friend he picked up at the beginning. Yeah. I like I, go. <laughs> he, he face palmed her and just tosses her, right? Move, just like that. Well, Jerry didn't like that shit. So that's whenever Jerry's like, oh, okay. Yeah. He's like, he's like, all right, come on. You ready? Now, the, the ball's on this guy, <laughs> though, man. The ball's on Jerry Mitchell. He comes running in <laughs> full speed. Throws a, throws a haymaker. <laughs> and Buddy's like this. Sidestep. <laughs> Bam. Hits him right in the chest. Right <laughs> this is one of the best parts of the movie. <laughs> he gets hit in the chest. He goes, <laughs> flies back. Falls down. Oh, I laugh every time I see that. At this point, that's when the security guard and the dean come on. Yes. And security guard, he's got this smile on his face like, oh yeah, I'm about to get me some right here. Comes up, tap, tap, tap. Buddy don't even turn around to see who it was. He just, what? Dropped him one punch. That's what I'm saying. Immediate punch on point. Hits Jerry in the freaking shoulder? I don't know. Maybe he just wanted to punish Jerry a little bit. I don't know. It was at this point, Buddy Ravel and his cheating ass decided to put on the brass knuckles. He uses the brass knuckles on special occasions. Anywho, as he's walking up there, he grabs Jerry and spits him to do a live or die. And then his friend jumps in. Oh, boom. Starts. Uh, jumps on Buddy Ravel's. Trying to attack? Kind of trying to attack him on his back, and Buddy Ravel kind of twists around. In the process, he drops the brass knuckles. Right. At which point, Jerry's sneaky little sister goes in, yoink, grabs the brass knuckles off the ground. Basically, Jerry knocks. Puts him on his back. Now Jerry's ready. So he needs the best friend in the Nards. And so let's count that. That is Mr. O'Rourke, the security guard, the girl, and his best friend. Four people. In one fight. In one fight. That, that got in his way. Two of them got decked. Three people total that got decked by him. And here's Jerry. Little old Jerry. Little old engine that couldn't. So Jerry's up on his feet. He comes up. They're squared off. And he comes up and he just... Haymakers. Oh. Jerry sidesteps. Bam! Hits him. Oh. Dazed his buddy Ravel. Dazed his buddy Ravel. Clearly, anybody who gets hit with brass knuckles, guess what? You're going to be dazed. Wins the fight. Buddy Ravel drops. At this point, cops show up. You know, we're breaking all this up. Jerry, you're coming with me. Grab the Ravel kid while you're at it, talking to the other officer. Crowd clears out. Buddy's gone. All right, now we're cutting to the next day at school. People heard about the break-in. Mm -hmm. And now people are coming up going, hey, I need uh, some paper. How much? A dollar a sheet, right? Let me get 20 bucks worth. Let me get 10 sheets. Let me get 15 sheets. Just throwing, throwing money, throwing money. Dollar a sheet. I hope it wasn't that much. I think he was just like... Yeah, no. was there, he was re re recouping yeah. the, the money. Re recouping the money, basically, that he yeah. stole, <laughs> mind you, that he stole. So the school rallies around Jerry, because now Jerry is this bad motherfucker who yep. took down the baddest motherfucker in the land. To be the best, you gotta beat the best, and that's exactly what Jerry did. Ravel walks in, walks straight up to Jerry... Holds his fist It's up. funny, though. Everybody gets quiet because it's all... <laughs> it looks, 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 looks like there's stock market trading and shit in there. <laughs> Ravel walks in. Everyone gets quiet. Parts like the Red Sea. Mm-hmm. Because, yeah. Holds his fist up to Jerry. Hands it over the... Uh, or puts it over the counter. And drops that money that Jerry paid him. So he got the money back. Jerry gives a little smile. Walks out. The teacher that he, as you put, what, mugged? Mugged down with the mugged teacher. Down the, teacher. Yeah. Yeah. the teacher comes up, and she straight starts mugging down with him. 
Mm-hmm. And that's the end of it. It's going to be one of those days. So the movie ends the way it started. So when Buddy Rebel got to, to campus, like Tim was saying, everyone is talking about, oh, I heard, I heard he, he, he fought a teacher for touching him. I heard he bro- stabbed a kid for, you know, whatever, right? Now they're talking about Jerry like that. I heard Jerry was the one who called him out. Yeah. So now all these rumors about Jerry. Yeah. Kissing the teacher. Right. Initiating the fight. Winning the fight. All that stuff. Even goes uh, so far as to say Bud Revell planted a knife in Jerry's locker. Yes. Jerry found it. Didn't like that. Um, yeah. Just. Yeah. So he is the next Buddy Revell. Now I have a theory. It's essentially the next Buddy Revell in the way that. The way he's being talked about. Yes. And now this legend has built about mm-hmm. Jerry Mitchell being basically as badass as Buddy Rebel. Now, first of all, I want to get into your theory and then we're going to get into some other things. So go ahead. Okay. Let's, let's get so, into your theory. So I have a theory and my theory is that Buddy Rebel threw the fight. And I say that because he drops the football player one punch Drops O'Rourke one punch. Drops the security guard one punch. Fights like four people in that fight. Even does a wind-up, a running punch to Jerry Mitchell. Now, Jerry Mitchell ain't no bitch. Does a, a, a running punch to Jerry Mitchell. Makes him do a 360. He could have taken his head off. But what really does it for me is after he gets hit with the brass knuckles, right? He kind of looks at Jerry. And with... With Buddy Revelle, because you see him kind of smile at Jerry at the end, he smiles with his eyes more than he does his lips. When, when he gets hit. When he gets, after he gets hit by with those brass knuckles. And he's like, he smiles with his eyes at him ever so, ever so slight. And then he gets knocked out. Now, O'Rourke was knocked out for the entire fight. The security guard was knocked out for the entire fight. The when the cop comes, it's like grab that buddy kid. A couple of minutes, he's gone. He's not, gone. Not even a couple of minutes. Yeah, he's gone, he's gone after like 30, 45 seconds. So, did he? It's an interesting theory, and you brought it up to me that night. We watched it what, a couple of weeks ago, and I'm like, huh, interesting. Because all really, all Buddy wants is to be a normal kid. He it was a born badass, <laughs> and has this following, this legend where every school he goes to, he has to fight somebody. He he's always labeled. He just wanted to be a normal right. a normal high school student. So what you're saying is, so he flipped the script and he, it worked. He threw the fight. Hey, he's he, smart. He threw the fight, so everyone will be talking about the next Buddy Ravel and Jerry Mitchell, and no one's talking about Buddy Ravel anymore. Right. And again, he did give him the money back, and he actually did smirk at him, smiled yeah. at him, like and it was almost like. You got my respect, kid. Kind and of thing. his smirk was more in his eyes than it was his mouth. He did smirk at him. But his eyes smiled at him. Very interesting theory. Yes. Um, I, I, I like it. If you guys have seen this movie and seen it even you know, recently, I think, I think the theory holds water. I got to be honest, it holds water. Um, so now let's get down to the ratings. Go ahead, you need a burp? <laughs> <laughs> let's get down to the ratings here. On Rotten Tomatoes. The tomato meter has 57%, and that's on 14 reviews. Now, if you guys don't know what Rotten Tomatoes is, basically it takes critics' reviews and gives it an overall score from there out of 100. 57%. Is that good on Rotten Tomatoes? I don't think that. Oh, no. 100% would be good on well, Rotten Tomatoes. Well, yeah, but right? how, many, how many things get 100%? I know, like, Toy Story 3 got, like, 98.7% or 99% or something like that. But it, that 57 is above average? It's above average. Now, we got an audience score based on 5,000 plus ratings from people who have seen the movie, 73%. I got to be honest. If I'm going to watch a movie, I'm going to go with the masses, what the audience is saying. Right. Instead of what critics think. Critics, I think a lot of time can get can get too lost in in movie technicalities when it comes to cinematography, when it comes to special effects, when it comes to acting, when it comes to all sorts of things like that. I think they get too lost in that to to just go, you know what, I'm going to watch this movie, I'm going to try to enjoy it, let me see what this movie's about. You know what I mean? The audience, especially if they've never made a movie, they're going to judge it based on what they see on the screen mm-hmm. and not necessarily things behind the, the, the scenes like, again, cinematography or things of that nature. Um, so 73%. Um, I guess now it's our turn to rate it, right? 
Yeah. What do you think? I'm thinking... I'm thinking 87%. 87. You want to do percentage? Like, to well, Rotten Tomatoes? Or do you want to well, do out of 10? Out of 10? Let's do out of 10. Let's do out of 10. I'm That's thinking 8 out of right. 10. 8 out of 10? 8 out of 10. You know what? I got to be honest. Um, 80s high school movie. This one was different than a lot of the 80s yeah. high school movies back in the day. You know, you got like The Breakfast Club and Pretty in Pink. Nothing against those movies. Fantastic films. But this was different. This was a different spin on on that, that 80s high school movie. Mm-hmm. Um, I'm going to go eight. You're going to go eight? I'm going to go eight. I thought the acting, for the most part, was pretty decent. Um, I thought the uh, story was unique, especially at the time. Um, I thought um, the fight at the end, six, six and a half minute fight scene, mm. kept your interest. Didn't seem like six and a half minutes. It flowed pretty well. It did flow pretty well. It flowed um, pretty well. Yeah, I like the creativity of him trying to get out of, again, this goes to the writing, out of, out of the fight itself, mm-hmm. you know? Um, I'm going to go eight. I got to be honest. If you guys have not seen this movie, go watch it. If you've not seen it in a while, go watch it again. It holds up. It, it holds, holds up. up. Yeah. So, yeah. I think it holds up. So, yeah, we're, we're at eight across the board on it. If you guys have seen this movie, let us know what you think in the comments. Is it an eight? Is it a two? Let us know. Oh, and please, put something down in the comments you want to see us do a review on. The odder, the more obscure, the better. Um, and I'm not talking like, you know, your, your cheesy C sci-fi films from the fifties and stuff like that. Not that we're above doing something like that, but you know, we're going to, we're going to touch on stuff that we were, when we were kids, eighties and nineties, we've got a couple of ideas for, you know, maybe some forgotten freshness in there, like, you know, BMX bandits or roller boys or something, you know, you might see those in the future, but please, if you guys have a suggestion, put it down there. Tim, thank you for being here with me. Thank you, Jay. I gotta be honest. I don't think I want to do one of these without you. Ditto, brother. (laughs) (laughs) Appreciate it, guys. See you on the next one. Later.